Yeah. Okay. So this is going to be a simple model uh, based on mobility done ad lib, and I'm asking some of my TAs to sort of record what's going on. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is build up a model. You've seen this several times now. So hopefully this is becoming more familiar. We'll go to file new model and uh, we're going to call this ABM, um, we'll call it uh, asthma, uh, maybe we'll call it ABM asthma, uh, asthma mobility model and V1 for version one. Remember it's the best practice to save away successive versions and it will be, the time unit will be hours for this, okay? So one unit of time will be one hour to two hours. If we have a rate, it'll be a per hour rate. Okay, so it's uh, creating this. And what we're going to put in place here is a set of resources in the community. So remember, age-based populations are composed of one or more populations of agents, of individual agents, where each agent is characterized by some assumptions about them, um, parameters, um, some state, some things that can, some actions that can change the state, rules that govern those, and a set of other features. And here we're going to have several populations of agents. So we're going to create several different agents. Um, we're going to right click on this and we're going to add an agent type for home. Generally, we, as a best practice, it's not to not only pay attention to names, but capitalization. And generally, when we're working in logic and when we are more generally in Java, um, we'll have certain conventions about how we use capitals. For example, in my state charts, you may have noted, I always capitalize states. That means at a glance, you can see it. You think, oh, that's probably a state name. I, I always make transitions lowercase, starting lowercase. Um, uh, my variable and parameter names are lowercase. Um, it's worth to pay attention. So when we create an agent class, when we create a something representing agent, a certain type of agent, a person, personhood, or personness, or uh, an, an agent class representing home, homes, or representing schools, um, we're going to capitalize it. Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to say finish there. There we go. Um, so we're going to represent uh, a home and. Um, I'm going to go to that home, make sure home is open, and we're going to give it a picture here, okay? Um, we're going to give it from pictures a, a picture of a home. We're going to use a house picture. There we go, house. Okay, where did I get that? I went to the palette, I went down to the second to last thing, and and I dragged in a house. There we go. Okay. Next, I want to do something similar for workplaces, schools, and community places. Okay. So new agent type workplace capital. And I think I'm just going to add these one after the time in the interests of, of speed. And then we'll go back and add an image to each. So workplace, school, again, capitalized, school. And community place. So this could be a store, or it could be a community center, or it could be, well, and I'll say finish, a community center, or it could be a athletic club, or, you know, a church, or whatever. 
Okay. Okay, now for each of those, uh, we, we did home, we did a little a little um, image for it. For school, we're going to need an image and same thing for workplace and same thing for community place. So we're gonna to go to the palette, this last one, and we're gonna to need to put in something for a school here, put in something for a workplace, et cetera. Um, uh, our options are somewhat limited here. Um, I think for a school, maybe we'll use the warehouse, I, um, warehouse icon um, with no aspersions. Um, for a workplace, we will use a factory, again, with no suppositions of the nature of the work. And for a community place, um, mumble, uh, maybe a retail store. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, that's, there's some sort of, what, what, what's this thing here? Oh, I accidentally added, added. So, okay, and don't you worry about that. I must have screwed something up. Okay, okay. So, um, all we've done thus far is we've added a notion of pers uh, of of homeness, schoolness, workplaceness, and community placeness, which consists of an icon. That's 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 our theory of homehood is that it has a picture like a home and then workplace it has a picture and school has a picture and community uh, place has a retail sort of picture. Okay, who needs help here? The TAs are strengthened today. Tony has brought new energy and new strength having been sadly stranded in Vancouver for two days. Uh, and uh, so, um, so please uh, let us know how we could help. How about online? Who's the Zoom master today? Who's the Zoom master? Uh, uh, well, Harriet, I, I hate to ask you to do it because you're doing yeoman's work also in, in, in sort of scribing what's going on here. Um, so it'd be nice if one of the other TAs could, could help out with, um, with monitoring the chat. Uh, uh, okay. Um, so, so if someone could put it in the, the, uh, uh chat for Nurgis, the Zoom, or, uh, or send it to Nurgis. Okay. That'll be great, Nurgis. Thank you. That'll be really handy. Um, okay. So, so here, all we've done is describe theories of homeness, personness, or not personness even, schoolness, et cetera, uh, workplaces, what it means to be a workplace, what it means to be a school, what it means to be a, a, a home. Okay, um, next, we're going to create a person class for personhood, new personhood with a capital P. Okay. And for this, we're going to go and we'll also go to that palette and we'll drag in person. Okay. A person icon. So person now has a has an image as well. Okay, next, I would like to go and we're going to create populations of each of these in a certain order, and this is important. Okay, does anyone can anyone remind me how do we create a population of a type of agent? What do we do? In Maine, yeah, it's in Maine. That's excellent. Yes, it's in Maine. It's a key fact. And what do we do? Yeah, we could drag it, but don't do person yet. Do the others first for reasons I'll come back to. Okay, so we're going to drag in 
successively, um, we'll drag in schools. Okay, schools. There we go. Um, this will be called schools. And it's a population of schools. We'll leave it the number to be determined in a little bit. Okay. Um, next, I'd like you to drag in homes. Mm -hmm. Homes. And make it called homes. And it should be a population of homes. Okay. Uh, next, I'd like you to do, uh, we have workplaces, drag those in and make it workplaces, make that a population as well. Each of these should be a population. One of the TAs should add Narges to the uh, ABM bootcamp uh, TA uh, chat on Hangouts. Um, and uh, and then finally, we should add in people, okay? A, a population of people. You want to do community places first? Uh, thank you. That's actually not as key, but um, that would be good. Thank you. Yeah. Population. Yeah. Um, okay. Population of agents. Thanks. Yeah. Um, um, okay. Good. And yeah, community place uh, it will be another one. And, and we're going to uh, have that be also a population. Okay. Now, Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, now I'd like you to add a parameter to describe, remember, parameters encode assumptions and allow us to communicate those assumptions from the point of creation to where they're used. Um, and here, uh, we're going to add a parameter that's going to characterize the Population size. Parameters give flexibility. Parameters give generality. They allow the same model to be used with a variety of assumptions. Um, yes, please mind the food. I think we just had a tab. Um, uh, so um, uh, we parameters allow us to have generality for a model. Okay. Um, they, they allow us to take the same model and run it with varying assumptions. Okay. Um, and uh, that lets the model to be reused in a variety of circumstances. Um, and uh, here we're going to add a parameter for the population size of people. Thank you, Matthias. Um, population size, okay? And population size is gonna be a count of people in the population. So its type is gonna be what? Int. Okay, great, thank you. Thanks, Maddie. Um, Okay, and we're gonna make its default value 250. Okay, 250. 250 people in the population. Are we okay with this? Okay, now, um, any questions for what I've done thus far? Does anyone wanna, wanna see anything here that I've done? In more detail? Questions? Okay. Okay. Next, we're going to set each of these populations of these resources to a size as given by the human populations. So we'll make them proportional. Okay. Now we can always have parameters for that ratio, but we're going to, um, uh, for, for each, but we're going to hard code the ratio and live with it. Um, so for populations, so this says populations, it should be population, sorry, my apologies. Population, 
And its initial number of agents is going to be what? Anyone say? Population size. Oh, sorry. Population. That's right. Now, meanwhile, however, each of these others is going to be uh, a, in a certain ratio to that. Okay. So for schools, I'd like you to make it population size divided by 50. Now, I'm going to teach you, I'm going to learn you something here. Okay. Uh, there's a formula and note what it says. And so, this is one thing, it's an ugly fact. And I wish I didn't have to tell this to you. We're moving towards options where we can eliminate this sort of nonsense. But the current state of the software is such that um, this, this expression, this formula, um, will be evaluated using what's called integer arithmetic. That's because the population size is of what type? Who can tell me? Population size is of type. You uttered it about nine, five minutes since. What was it? N. It was an N. And if you divide an integer by an integer, it performs what's called an integer, multi integer division. Now, that may not seem like a big, a big deal, but what I mean is it's not going to give fractional value back. It's going to give only integer values. So population size were, were you know, uh, something like uh, 49. This would give a zero. Okay. Um, and if population size were, you know, 110, it would give two because it only gives, the, you know, uh, the complete divisions by 50 and it goes twice into 110 with some left over yes 10 left over but it just throws that away just be aware that you have to be a bit careful about this in any logic um and we'll have to live with it in this case we do want an integer so it's fine but just be aware that that does go on and you got to be a bit careful about it at times if you actually wanted to do division as fractional quantities, you just put 50.0 and it will do it as a fractional thing. Um, but if you do 50, it'll say, oh, it's an integer. This is an integer division. In this case, it's what we want. We want an integer here. So it's fine. Just in general, you want to be careful. So this schools is going to be population size 50. If it's 250 people in the population, it's going to be five schools. Homes, maybe I'll put these next to it so it's clear which which is describing which homes we're going to have population size divided by five okay mm. Mm. maybe we'll make it four four yeah fine um for workplaces we're gonna have this be uh 10 divided by 10. Mm -hmm. We already have done population. And community places, we're going to do it by, by five uh, as well. Okay. Okay. So each of these is going to be of a size given by the by the population size. Great. Now the final the, the the final thing we're going to do before we run it is to set a random layout at first uh, for each of these, okay? And then we're going to refine it, okay? So I'd like you. Where can we go to set a random layout? Anyone? Where can we go? Anyone remember where that is? Any logic? Anyone? Turns out it's in main. Go main. Sorry, go main. Go down main. Here we go. And if you go to the space and network area, you could say layout type random. By the way, the others are like arranged, like arranged a grid, ring. It'll put them in a ring. Spring mass, it'll put things that are connected close to each other. We're going to put them random. Okay, 
Now, my colleague Jeff McDonald advocates, he says, at any time, you should be within 30 minutes of a runnable model when you're building a model. You should always build it up step by step so at any time you can quickly run it because that's when you often realize some interesting behavior from this. You learn some interesting behavior. You learn from its behavior or you notice a problem. But you want to run it in order to get that realization. There's a problem. There's a there's some interesting new behavior that comes from it. And the fact that we have been building these things up incrementally is not an accident. It's not just to boost morale. It's not just to give us something interesting to look at. It's, it's so that we can observe how each component we added changes the model, okay? Okay, um, so I'd like you to go and, uh, yes, question, Nona. Uh, thank you, Tim, teacher, and for uh, those demands. Can we use the integer part function that uh, is signed in the branch? In the mathematics, we use integer Yeah, in this case, we don't have to. Uh, in, in this case, good man, I guess, good man. Um, in this case, we don't have to um, because we only want the integer portion. And, and that actually, that so called expression, that formula, we call those things expression in. In any logic, um, or in in Java, or in programming in general, these things are called expressions. This is actually an integer expression. Yes, you. There is a way to say, "Give me the integer part." If this were divided by fifty, it would actually yield a double value. It would yield a floating point value, like you know, depending on population. If if this were one ten, it would the value would be two point you know, 2.2, right? And um, and you could say, give me the integer part of this, but we don't have to do that if we make it an integer division here. So I'm just gonna leave it as that. But yes, we, we could do that. We could discard it and put an integer thing. Yeah. Nadius, was there a problem or not? Okay. Okay, we'll talk later. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for being vigilant. Okay, so let's make sure this builds and now let's run it. Okay. Okay, so this is kind of a dog's breakfast. You know, you have people who you houses, workplaces, schools, but it kind of it shows us our population, it's fine. It gives us something that we haven't done something crazy in terms of the numbers, but now we want to do something more substantive, right? This is just the problem. Now we want to have each person be associated with a particular home and have the person start there, right? people associated with schools or workplaces, that sort of thing. Okay, so let's work towards this. Okay, so let's let's, let's close this. But I think in, in honor of, of, of your industry, I will post this forthwith to, um, to the course site in case you'd like to, uh, to grab it. So there's my asthma mobility model version one, and I'm gonna start on version two, okay, V2. Okay, okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to give these people some face upon the world, some, some characteristics that distinguish them beyond their location, okay? So, um we are going to here um right 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 okay 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 um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay um so we're going to go to person and we're going to add some parameters to them we're going to give them some characteristics okay 
So parameters and code characteristics that won't change. And for the sake of this model, one of them will be age in years. In years. And it will be a double. And I'll say by default, no one specifies there'll be, you know, uh, 30 years old, sure. But we're going to be specifying this when, when we specify the characteristics of the agents. Does anyone remember? We're giving a default value. If it's if it's not stated when we create them, what age they will, they're going to be 30. We're, we're giving that a certain value so we, so we can recognize it. We could, in fact, give them a value that will recognize it very obviously. Maybe we'll give them a value of minus 1.0, and then we'll will recognize, hey, hey, you have an illegal value. I must have I must have a problem with my model if I even filled this in. So this should never be used. I'm oh, sorry, it should never be that we encounter an agent with this because we'll take care of it. What, what thing in the model will end up specifying the value of the parameter of an agent? Can anyone tell? We've actually added it already to the model. What is it that will specify it? It'll be the... Pop, pop. Population. The population of people will be specified. It will specify the characteristics of the population that's depicted, including their age and years. But this isn't the only thing we want to specify there. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, we also want to specify something uh, something else. By the way, you notice I, met, I left age and years as a double. I want to specify their home. We're going to give each person, were it only so in the world, a home, a roof over their head, okay? Um, and this is going to be of what type? What type do you think home will be? Here's a bunch of choices. Is it a Boolean? Is it an integer? Is it an angle? Is it a flow rate? Is it a community place, a school, it's a home. It's a home, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna give them a home. Are we okay with that? Hearing no objections. Um, okay. Uh, great. Um, now, we're also going to give a right. Um, we're also going to give them uh, a workplace uh, and a school, okay? Um, uh, that will be used, but these are actually going to be a uh, are are going to be a set as variables because we're actually going to determine them during the model. So I'm going to say a workplace, okay? Um, we could actually do this in a couple of ways. Um, I'm going to make this uh, a workplace. It's going to be uh, a variable and I'm going to give it a value that shouldn't happen, null, okay? And, and that's something we can look for. If there's a problem if it occurs. And actually, I should have said that for home, for its default value, I'm going to give it null since I'm going to spot, gosh, if there's any home that's null, it means I've forgotten to initialize it. It spots my errors early. Fail early, fail often. You want your model to tell you if there's a problem, not to paper it over, not to hide it, to tell you to your face there's a problem. So I'm going to draw for the workplace and I'm going to draw from the school. I'm going to make these, I'm going to make the school a school, but it's going to have an initial value null. Null means it doesn't point to any, it doesn't refer to any workplace, any particular school. And it will be null for the home too. We don't have, so if we see it's null, it, it, it means we know we didn't correctly fill it in where we should have. So this is a bad practice of sort of putting in place Guards, sort of sentinels, things that will alert you if you've made a mistake. 
we, we should never encounter this. But if we fail to have logic elsewhere to give this the proper value, we want to know as soon as possible, not paper it over, not just hide it, not hide it under the rug. If our model is broken, we want to know it as soon as possible, not pretend like it's not broken and publish a paper or two on it. Okay. Okay. Take it from an old man. Okay. Great. So if we were to run the model now, what would we see? What age would people be? Could anyone tell me? They'll all be 30. So we have to go fill in their age. And, and you told me, not, not 10 minutes then, you told me the thing that specifies the assumptions for each person is the what? P pop population. population, yeah. Yeah, the population, ladies and gentlemen, the population. If you go to population, you'll notice that we have to fill in the age and years and the home. Oh, you notice I, I said minus one instead of 30 in the end, but um, to make it more obvious. Okay, the age and years for the population in Maine, we're going to draw from a value here. Uniform between zero and 0, 0.0. .0 and 65.0. Notice I'm being a little bit more careful. I'm, I'm giving values like 0, 0.0. I could have said zero, but it's I'm leading you to be a little bit more wary, a little bit more savvy, a little bit more um, uh, aware of when you're dealing with integers versus double. And these are, are actually doubles that are needed. And it's it's worth being careful because you don't want to end up with doing something silly like having integer division when you don't need it. Now, I could show you at this juncture how to put in place a custom distribution of age, but we have miles to go and that's not our main point here. If we have time before lunch, I will do that, okay? But here we go. For the home, we're going to draw the home from a an initial uh an initial place okay um from a set of homes okay um and specifically we're going to draw it from homes dot random okay dot random and and we want this so we're drawing the age for each person in the population for each person in the population it's going to draw their age in this uniform distribution. I can show you how to build the custom distribution. It's a beautiful object in any logic that will let you draw things from a, a distribution of your choosing. But we may go there later. Next, I'm going to draw their home from for this given person. For each person in turn, I'm going to say use this formula to, to figure out what their home is. And it's going to draw it from the population of homes. Are we okay with that? Okay, so that's good. That's good. And Wade is gonna watch watch over me here. Um, uh, that's right. Um, and I think that, again, I'm out living here, but um, Think we should we should, for the x location of a person we're going to for their initial location put them at a specified point and what is that point going to be? It's self dot home that's their home dot get x okay it should be okay wait. Uh, Wait, I need you to, to be my wingman. Um, so uh, I think this will will be what we what yeah, we that should work. what we want. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay. So what do we do here? We had given someone earlier some characteristics: an age and years in a home, and we had used things that would be 
uh, placeholders for those that would be sh clearly show up if we used them, make them values that would sh stick out like a sore thumb if they were still circulating incorrectly. And we went to the population. It's the population that fills in the characteristics of each person. So for the age and years, I'm specifying between zero and six, 65. Um, for the home, I'm drawing their homes from a random set of homes. And then for the X location, I'm getting get X and the Y location for their location, I'm getting get Y. So if we run this right now, what will, what should we see? Remember, we saw a dog's breakfast before. What are we going to see this time? Four, four people around each other. Yeah, they're going to be around their house, right? Um, so, um, so here we go, and people. Oh, well, I'll be. Um, okay, that's that's. That's interesting. That's not what I expected, um, as you can see. Um, okay, so um, I need uh, I need my wingman. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. So first of all, let's go let's go figure out what's wrong. Let's go see if each person is a home here, and we we may have. So, so so where could the problem be? Well, it could be that we're not giving them a home properly, or it could be that we're giving them a home and it's not figuring out its X, Y location properly. Um, so each person I'm checking out, uh, and this person has a home 30, they're associated with home 35, okay. And I would expect them to be able to be associated with that home's location through this. But um, if not, I can do it another way. And that's not a big deal. But any thought, Wade? I'm pretty sure I've done it this way before. My, my thought yeah. is, yes. Uh, I, uh, that the people are being randomly arranged after. Oh, <clears throat> I see. Yeah. That is overriding this it's location. Overriding that. I see. Um, so, uh, bu, 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 okay. Um, so, there's a couple of ways we could deal with this. Um, I like that idea, Wade. Um, I think what we will do could. So, I'm gonna, if with your leave, dear viewers and and colleagues, I'm going to check that out. That hypothesis out by trying something, and if it works, we're home free. And we'll go with it. If it doesn't, I have another way to do it, which will be um, risk free. But but I'm going to do do it this way. So I'm going to go to main, and I'm going to turn off this random layout. That's fine. And now I'm going to put homes. Um, I'm going to put the uh, population of homes in random places. There we go. So their X location will be uniform. Don't 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 follow me yet because I'm just checking this out uh, between there and space width, yeah. And and now we're gonna do it for Y between zero and space height. And we I think we will. So we'll have homes arranged in random locations, and we'll have people hopefully at the location of their home here. So let's go try this out. This is provisional, and uh, we'll see if it's any better. Aha, a thing of beauty. Now, where are all the workplaces? Where are all the schools? Where are all the community places? Can anyone see them? Up there, yeah. So we've got to distribute them around. Okay, so it, it worked. Um, uh, so uh, Wade's hypothesis was evidently borne out. Uh, it was overriding um, the uh, the location that we specified by this randomness. And so what I did is I went and I set homes to be explicitly at random locations. Instead of saying, just make everything random, I went and I said, hey, the population of homes are at these locations. We can do that 
for schools. We can do it for workplaces. We can do it for community places. So I'm going to copy this thing, uniform from zero to space width here, and for their X, and I'm going to do it for schools. So, so what I'm doing is I'm going to homes. I, I put this in place for, for homes. Um, so I'm putting this in the chat window. Okay. There we go. Okay. That's, that's for X. That's for X location. Um, that was for X location. For Y location, we are putting it to place this. For Y location, it will be this. And we're going to do this for each of these collections, each of these populations. So for schools, I will do it in the specified point. And same thing for workplaces. I apologize for this, but but it's it's just um, uh, an easy way to do it. And then community places, there's another way to do it. Okay. Great. Next. Yep, yep. I'm 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 going to do it for the Y now. No, I haven't finished uh, this. Okay. So. Now I've got to do it for all the Y's. All I'm doing is, is going for each and doing it for the X's, I say in the specified point, and now I'm doing it for the Y's. There we go. Once you finish, it might be a good time to post the model. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah. A little bit, yeah. Um, but not nearly as strong as yesterday. Okay, we're thanks. thanks, sir. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um okay, so I'm going to make sure it builds. I'm gonna make sure it works and then I'll post it. So who would like me to show anything? Do you need me to show something? Yes. For the population. Yep. The population that put it where the home is. The people are put where their home is. Who would like me to show anything more? Who would like me to demonstrate anything? Okay. We're gonna we're gonna run this model and we're going to have people located at their homes, and then there's gonna be the factory, well, the workplaces, there's gonna be the schools, and there's going to be the the workplaces. Oh, sorry, the um, community places. Okay. Now, I'm not doing this at GIS uh, here. I'm not doing it because that would that would require putzing with a lot of mechanisms and doing it by lunch would be infeasible. But all of what I just did could be translated readily into GIS terms. And if there's, by acclimation, I could do this for GIS or adapt this type of thing for GIS in another session. It's 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 um, uh, a straightforward adaptation, but involves some details, like finding Saskatoon on the map and doing various things like that. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I will post this now. Oh, sorry, post this, okay? Um, so I am getting it up on the course site and we are good good to go. Okay. Yes. Oh, there's a question. Thank you. Are there any resources you could share about working with GIS in any logic? Um uh yes. I um 
I uh, I will make sure, uh, Rachel, that we will talk um, in a fulsome way about this uh, during the boot camp. Um, uh, I have some slides on using models with geographic information systems that I will be presenting today um, that uh, I could include. But um, again, if there's if there's strong interest, uh, I could do even a breakout on this where we walk through it. It's um, uh, it's not perfect. It's I'd say it's it's pretty good, but there are some um, there are some things that are really easy with it, and then there are some things where it um, it, it exhibits uh, incomplete support. I think like Wade, Wade knows quite a lot about this, but shape file support is quite limited. And uh, on the other hand, for a lot of the basics, routing people from one location to another on on roads or on walking paths or bike paths or you know locating people within a city and 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 uh, having having resources placed in that city, convenience stores and grocery stores and hospitals and um, medical offices, all that, it's, it's very good. I mean, all those sort of basics, I'd say it's quite quite good. Um, um, I'll, I can comment more later. Yeah. yeah I'd say it's really, I, I'd say it's overall pretty good until you get really, you know, more detailed uh, needs and Wade could comment on that at the time. Okay, are we good to go forward? Does anyone need more time here? Okay, okay. So, um, as I said, what I could do could be translated to GIS terms very regularly. We would have houses around the city, and we would have schools at their actual location, and we would have potentially uh, workplaces at their location. Um, if, if you had information about that, uh, et cetera. Um, next, um, we are going to put in place some state charts that reflect action undertaken by a person. Because after all, we want people circulating. Now there's two types of state charts that we need to put in place, okay? Um, and uh, we're going to, have a simple state chart involving mobility, which will distinguish when people are at a location versus outside. Um, and we will be doing so to reflect the fact that for asthma, there's different risk factors indoors, particularly air quality indoors, with outdoor phenomena where you might have air concerns depending on pollution, PPM 2.5 levels, etc. But you also have things like temperature, humidity, which could put someone at risk of uh, triggering asthma. So there's two things you want to represent, movement and, and, uh, and asthmatic attacks. So I'm going to put into place a state chart just kind of by way of motivation, it's the easier of the two for asthma. Okay, and this is the first time I've actually uh, sought to represent this uh, in a model, so I'm gonna um, represent it in a particularly simple way. Um, asthma state chart. Um, and um, I'm, I'm going to have uh, one state which will be normal breathing. Mm -hmm. And and I'm probably using horrible terms, but uh, this will be um, uh, 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 coughing or or wheezing. Um, uh, I'll, maybe I'll say um, in a bout a bout of asthma. Um, maybe that's. Maybe I'll say coughing or wheezing, Cough, coughing or wheezing. Now, clearly, maybe later I'll want to break those out, but but um, for now we're going to have normal breathing. They could proceed to coughing or wheezing, um, and then 
they could proceed back to um, to normal breathing. They can get out of that bout. So, um, so I'm going to uh, go for this link here for normal breathing, to coughing or wheezing. I'm going to call this um, uh, uh, triggered uh, uh, triggered uh, um, bout. Um, meaning that they have a bout of asthma that's been triggered, sort of um, episode. Um, and then um, uh, I'll, I'll say recovery from bout. And I'm going to show the name from both of these, okay? And we're going to come back to these because risk factors in their area will govern um, how likely they are to go from one to the other. How likely are they to go from normal breathing to coughing or wheezing, for example? Okay. Okay. Mm. Mm. Wait, I want to speak with you before lunch about something. Sure. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Next, we're going to put into place the mobility state chart. So does anyone need to see anything here? For now, we're just putting placeholders for, for the movement. Yes. Oh, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, welcome these, these covets. There we go. Okay. So for now, these are just placeholders. These are like one hour, they'll go back and forth. We're gonna put in some hazard rates for those. We're gonna turn those, maybe I'll turn these into rates here. Well, well, because they're going to be rates and they're going to be rates based on risk factors, based on temperature, based on air quality, based on humidity, that sort of factor. OK. Are we OK with this? Based on pollutant level, PPM 2.5, et cetera. Are we OK with this? Cigarette smoking can also bring out asthma, um, asthmatic attacks. OK. OK, next. We're going to have a mobility state chart. Ah, now this is getting to the heart of some things in our model. Okay, this will be called mobility state chart. I'll be posting it a little bit after this. If anyone wants to grab it, I will uh, be happy to share it. Okay, great. So the mobility state chart is going to be a little bit boilerplate-ish, and I apologize, but it's also going to have some essential features. Okay, so it's going to have a state chart at home, a state, a state at home, okay? And then they're going to go via a commute. Well, okay, let's focus on the states first. There'll be a state in transit in transit to work you may say well, why represent that well there there are some reasons the deal is while well, people are outside in the saskatchewan cold they may be exposed to risk factors for an asthmatic bout they may be exposed to minus 30 degree weather very regularly and and low humidity uh and that makes and, and in other cities it may be more issues with pollution here in saskatoon we've been plagued as as much of canada and much of northern u.s by wildfires too and smoke exposure could be put in right as a exogenous factor you could have per day smoke levels for example recorded historically and put it into the model in terms of a risk factor that's getting you thinking. So we're gonna have to keep track when they're outside versus when they're inside. We're, these are different risk factors. 
Incidentally, we're anticipating running a smartphone-based data collection study involving these sort of factors, and that could inform a model like this. Okay, in transit to work, and then at work, and then in parallel to that, there's gonna be in transit to school and at school. So I'm gonna show you a trick. I'm gonna select these two states. You could do it by grabbing them like this. I'm gonna hold down the control key, which Wade will state in stentorian voice what the equivalent is for holding down the control key on a Mac. Hold command down. Hold command down and on a Mac. And you drag over and you're going to release it. And these are now called in transit to work. I want one and I want in transit to school. And instead of at work, it'll be at school. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, following that, they're going to be in transit to the community place, in transit to community um, places, place, places, um, and then they'll be in the community, mm -hmm. in community, um, and then they're going to go back home. Okay, it was the idea. So after school, after work, they may have some errands to run, et cetera. Now, of course, system science is not about the pieces fundamentally. It's about the connection. It's the roles that things play, that the, the things that are changing the underlying situation, the ways in which the pieces interact. That's of foremost interest in system science. So those components are defined by connections here. And so let's add some connections. Okay, so I'm going to add a, a, a connection, a, a transition here, and I really should have left some more space. And I apologize. I'm just going to go up and and pull that up to give us some more, to give it a proper space, a room of its own. There we go. Okay, there we go. So I, I put in a transition here. And now I'm going to put a branch. And the branch is going to go either they're in transit to work or they're in transit to school. Oops. Oops. Come, come on. There we go. And we're going to set this to be the conditional. What type of thing might govern whether someone's going to go to school or go to work? Their what? Their age. So if, so sorry, the condition will be age in years less than 19. Don't think like that. I mean, we, we could get more specific about it but time is short and we have to move quickly and live light on the land, okay? Okay, so, so I'm gonna show the names. This is gonna be heading, heading to school will be this one, heading to school. That will be, if this condition is true, they'll head to school if they're less than 19. If uh, this will be the default. That's why it's dotted. We don't have to give a separate condition for it. But we should show its name. This will be heading to work. Mm. There we go. There we go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. We're, we're, things are coming along. Things are coming along. Okay. This this um, uh, transition from at home to this branch, maybe I'll bring down the branch a bit. This transition, this here transition will be called um, 
starting commute. Commute. And it'll be a timeout transition undertaking 15 hours after getting, after spending 15 hours at home. Now, were there time? Were there interest? Were there acclimation? I could show how to link this to a schedule construct in any logic, which would hitch it up to certain times of the day and days of week. One schedule would apply and another schedule would apply. That's a, a, it's a nice bit of elements of logic captured in any logic. Um, quite a few of any logic features have come from our feedback over the years and things that are painful with models and they actually built it in. And I'm appreciative of that. Um, so 15 hours. Health needs we helped uh, reveal to any logic. Okay, now. So this is starting commute. Fifteen hours after entering their home, they're going to they're going to go here. Um, next, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have transitions from in transit to school to at school, and this is going to be a transition called arriving at school. And it's going to be a new type of transition. I could see evidence of how hard Harriet and Mattias are working, bending their back to the task and, and scribing this, this novel exercise. Okay, this is a new type of transition. This transition is widely, type is widely used in GIS modeling and in spatial movement here and it's called an arrival transition, agent arrival. There we go, there we go, agent arrival. When they arrive at school, they will they will move from in transit to school to at school, and their risk factors will change to the school environment. Okay. Next. We will copy that. We'll have a similar transition. I just I just copied it, and I'm going to modify it. Mutatis mutandis. But you could just build another transition called arriving at work. I I just I copied it, so it's it's the same thing. This whole state chart. This would be the same for GIS model. It's, it's it really the GIS side is going to affect would affect only. A handful of places here, but it would involve more setup up front because you gotta find that's good to find its shape and go locate where the schools are, go locate where the where any workplaces are, place the homes in the shape of the city geographically. And then there's gonna be a few places where um you're gonna have the set settings for where are you traveling on roads or bike paths or whatever and but then pretty much i think the the instructions for moving are going to be basically the same move to is that right wave it's going to be basically the same for gis as here yeah it'll just be in a gis environment um okay ladies and gentlemen but it's important to do gis up front if you're going to do it i think I, have you ever engineered it in after the fact wade I tried once. I, I think that's a solid recommendation. Of it. If you want GIS, you can build it in up front. Yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, we're then going to have, whether they're at school or at work, they're going to, um, well, what do you think? From school, should they, I'll say they both go to community place. So it will save our, Logic, they're going to be in transit to a community place. Maybe kids go to, you know, go to uh, uh, the uh, sports fields or they go to math club or whatever. And um, and then the um, uh, the adults might go into the community for errands. Um, these transitions are going to be um, 
you know, uh, finishing school, uh, and it's going to be a timeout transition after eight hours. So eight hours in school, and we'll assume the same thing for work. Okay, this will be after eight hours at work, and this is going to be called finishing work. Um, obviously, you could you could refine this, challenge it. You could have kids go home with a certain probability or go to after school events, et cetera. Okay, okay, cool. And now, mm, now they go to the community um, and then after an hour in the community, they will go home, okay? Um, I'm, I'm just gonna drag this up there and then I'm gonna bend it to my will. So I'm gonna bend it at a few, I double click on it and I can drag it, double click on it and I can drag it and and I can in transit to home. Thank you, Wade. Thank you, Wade. Everyone needs a Wade. Um okay, that's great. Thank you, Wade. Um yes, yes, indeed. Um so maybe I'll put it up here in transit to home. Thank you. It prints it to home, and um, maybe I'll put it up, 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 uh, kind of between these states. And I'm going to create a transition. Um, yeah, tra transition from in community to prints it to home, and maybe I'll bend it a little bit just so it's more purdy. And then I'm going to do it from in transit to home to home. And thank you, Wade. Uh, this will be uh, based on an agent arrival transition. And this will be agent arrival. So this will be arriving at home. Arriving at home. And it's going to show the name. That's great. And here we go. This will be uh, heading home, this one. And this will be after an hour in the community. There we go. OK. Hey, so what did I do? This is, this is a bit of a chore. It's a bit of boilerplate but I think you get the basic gist of it. We're describing kind of their day. And obviously you could have more branches where they decide dynamically what to do or based on the person's characteristics or based on whether lockdown orders are in place or based on whether it's summer or whatever, you could, you could modify this. Okay, so we have some mobility structure, state chart structure, but what we're missing is the logic to make the mobility happen, right? If we, if we ran this right now, would people be moving around? Would they be moving? No. no. Why not? Why aren't they moving? Because we haven't told them to move, right? No, we haven't said like move. We 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 gave nice names, saying they're at work, at home, in transit, but we actually haven't effectuated it. We haven't made it happen. We haven't realized it. So let's do this. And again, for those interested in GIS, carries over exactly. The, the How we're going to do this, the instructions we use, the commands, can be exactly the same in GIS. Okay. So how are we going to do this? Well, when they head to work, we're going to move them to their workplace. Uh, when they head to school, we're going to move them to school. But there's a little problem. It's a little bit of debt we have to pay off. We have to set their workplace in school. Do you see that? Remember, we said these are null. It's like We haven't set what their workplace is. We haven't set what their 
what their uh, school is, right? Um, so can we do this? Can we do it? Can, cannot. Can. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so uh, what we're going to do is, and it, it's an easy, easy thing to do um, in a couple of ways. The easiest thing, and I'm going to, I'm going to do the easiest thing. Um, coming in for the mobility state chart, we're going to set those to be the nearest school and the nearest workplace. Now, mind you, it's going to be a bit weird because someone as a kid is going to have a workplace. We we could not assign it if they're a kid. That wouldn't be bad. Um, um, but it may be easiest to just say, okay, well, we'll give them a workplace um, uh, nominally, but but it's just not going to apply. They're never going to head to it. Um, I'm not sure what the best way to do that is, um, uh, but I want to do this quickly. So I think I'm going to say, okay, workplace will be, okay. Um, and uh, what we're going to, what we're going to set here is, sorry, workplace. Whoa, sorry. I don't know what I just did. Um, hey, hey, okay. Um, sorry about that. Um, workplace equals main dot, sorry, no, it'll be get nearest agent. So we're going to get the nearest agent of what agents? What agents are we going to get? We're going to get the nearest ones to ourselves of from what group? For setting the workplace, we're going to find out the nearest what? Uh, well, we're in a home right now. And so to figure out what our workplace is, we're going to find, how about a random workplace? Can we find it? We'll find a random workplace. How about we do that? Okay, we'll find a random workplace in the city. Okay, so where do the workplaces live in this model? They live in where? Do they live in, do the workplaces live in the schools? Do the workplaces live in the homes? The workplaces live in what part of the model? It begins with M. Main. Main, thank you. Main dot workplaces dot random. Hmm? Hmm. Probably should have just done this as a parameter. I, 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 um, I was thinking, well, I, kind of assign to them differently or something, but I, yeah. Anyway, um, workplace equals, it's just gonna be a random one chosen from the workplaces in Maine. And the school by contrast will be my nearest school. So this will be get nearest agent. By the way, same thing for GIS. You'll be at, asking for your geographically nearest agent. And GIS, wait, can you ask it like, Get me my nearest by like road distance. There's if you look at the auto complete there. Yeah. Uh, there's a get nearest by route. Oh, okay. If you want it to be like so for GI right. right. So for GIS, you're saying get agent by route. You can basically it would reason about how far it is by the by the streets, for example. Right. If if it was in street. Um, uh, street mode, yeah, no, to, to travel by streets. So we're going to get the nearest agent from what collection of agents? What collection of agents? We want to find my school. I want to find the nearest what? Begins with S. It has two O's in it. It has, ends with L. It, 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 it has S-C-H-O-O-L. S. Um, so where do the schools live in this model? Maine. So main dot, not yeah, main dot schools. Are we okay with that? Main dot schools. Are, are you okay with this? Hearing no objections. Um okay. So I'm getting my school from the nearest agent of schools, and I'm getting my workplace uh from a random workplace. I in retrospect, I, I should have made these parameters. Um, I was thinking we needed the extra flexibility and we wouldn't initialize one if they were young, but I, 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 since I've done both, we should have just done, done both. Okay, 
Okay, so we got our workplace and we got our school. Now, if I'm young, um, then I, I'm only going to pay attention to my school. If, I, if I'm older, I'm going to pay attention to my workplace. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, when I head to my school, what do I need to do to realize that I'm going to my school? I need to move to my school. So I'm going to this heading to school, and I'm going to say I could, or I could put it in this entry action for the state, either one, but I'm going to call it, put it in heading to school for the action. I'm going to say move to hmm, school. Okay, wait, I need your your help. Um, so you want the one that says move to and accept an agent? Yes. Yes. Uh, so I think this will. That should work. That should work. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, and then for workplace, where do I move to? If I'm going to my workplace, I should move to my workplace. Move to workplace. So, so uh, this one was moved to school, and this one is moved to workplace. Do I need a semicolon? Yes, because I'm saying what? Do it. Make it happen. You know, make it's not just computing a value. It's not just calculating a formula. It's it's saying make this happen, buddy. Like, do this. Perform this task. Conduct this task. Make it happen. And it says, yes, ma'am. Mm. Okay. You ready with for that? I don't mean for it to say yes, ma'am, but for it to, okay. So they're going to be in transit to school and they're going to arrive at school. That occurs automatically when they get there, if they're going to arrive. And then they're going to finish school and they're going to go to a community place. Now, this one, we're going to need to pick a community place. And you'll notice that regardless we're coming from work or from school, we're, we're both going to pick a community place. So I'm going to, in this place, the, the, entry, the entry action to this, I'm going to pick a random community place and I'm going to go there. Are we okay with that? We're going to do it at the entry action here. It's when we get here, we're going to head there. We're going to go to that community place. But first, we got to find out which one we're going to go to. So how do I go to a place? I say, How do I set them in motion to go to a place? I say what? I said it twice already. Move to. Good. And which community place do I go to? I want to go to a random one. Where are community places in the model? Where are they represented? They're in the, in what? Main, in Main. That's exactly right. Okay. So main dot community places dot, and how do I find a random one? Random. Yeah. So let me, and, and I, do I need a semicolon? Yes. Because I'm saying do it. Okay. So let me explain this a little bit. I'm saying Mains community place. You could almost think of this dot as like an, an apostrophe. It's like mains community places. Okay, and for them, give me a random one, something like that. I mean, don't don't write it this way. I'm just trying to analogize it grammatically. It's saying the community places in Maine. Give me a random one. Like, hey, community places in Maine. Yeah, you know? give me a random one of yours, and it will give me back one, and I'll move there. Hmm. Okay, there's only one more thing to do. One more place to go. What is that place that we still have to go? Home. home. We have to go to home. Where should I go home here? Where should I go home? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Or we could do it in this beginning of this state. That's also fine. Maybe for a bit of variety, we'll do it when they enter this state. This fires after an hour in the community, and we'll have that right now. And we'll have them at this place in transit to home. We will have them move to, and where will they move? To their home. Do I need a semicolon? Good. 
Make sure it builds. Make sure it's a happy camper. And we will run it. Who needs, who needs me to show you something? I just went on a forced march. Uh, I, I remind you here, I only go this way if I'm less than 19, I move to my school. This way, I move to my workplace. This way, and, and automatically they arrive here, finish school. Um, after school, I move to a random community place. And then uh, after finishing that, I move home and then I go back home. Now, you may wonder like, well, uh, I mentioned the schedule object. The schedule object would like, um, I think it's a fair thing. To, wait, did you use schedules with this before? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you could set it so basically they leave at 7 a.m. from home and they they leave for the community at 2.30 from school and then, you know, 5 o'clock from work or something like that. And basically, it would avoid you needing to worry that this is going to get progressively off because of the time and transit and stuff like that thing is, is the basic deal. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of glossing over that part, but you know, we, we could examine this. Okay. Um, the final thing that we need to do is set and wait. Um, my main man, I, I need to... I need to recall this. We actually determined it in 394.858, and I need you to help me recall it. Remember this whole thing about the speed of agent movement? Yes. Um, and and I, I need to remember uh, the best place to set it. We, we actually figured it out there, what the rules are. You experimented with it. Do you remember that? Yeah, I think... Probably in the population. Population. Yeah. It's in the dimensions and movement. They're, they have an initial speed in the population. Yeah. So if you go to the population of people in Maine, there's an initial speed, which is rather fast for walking, 10 meters per second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're going to change it to what um, half a meter per second, something like that. Is that too slow? I'm just going to look it up. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, well, three. I eight miles per hour last time because I was three miles an hour is like a fast a, a fast forced march of uh of, of infantry. Yeah. Yes, Narjus. Question in the chat. Thank you, Narjus. Um uh, right way, but I'm having trouble converting from imperial to metric. Yeah, well, you can just choose the um, unit of convenience there. Oh, okay. Where do I update the model time step? Oh, yeah. So, Rachel, when you first uh, create the model, you could set it, but you could go back and set it in model time unit uh, here. If you go to the model as a whole, model time unit. Now, the problem is, Rachel, that um, sometimes when you start it off on a different time unit, um, uh, okay, okay. If you if you started it on that time unit, what you're going to have to be very careful about, Rachel, is that um, any times here, make sure these times for like starting commute are in hours here, like this one here and in this one and in this one. Because if you started off having having not used the correct time unit. Um, the default value time will be in whatever time unit you use. So if it's in seconds, they'll spend like one second in the community. So you got to be extra careful about this. And similarly, unfortunately, fortunately, we're not, we haven't yet added things like updating graphs, but they'd be set to update every second on average or, you know, on, on by default. And so, so uh, being vigilant for the time unit is actually early is, is important. I think in this model, it, it's manageable, but you could talk with the TAs online um, to 
to help you adjust it if you need to, okay? Um, but just be sure to look for any timeouts and any rate transitions. We don't have rate transitions yet. Uh, oh, we do, we do over here. Make sure these guys are in per hour, um, these rate transitions here. So good good lesson to for others to be aware of. Pay attention to time early and if and, and be vigilant. If it's off, try to find it as soon as possible, or else it can cause a lot of grief. I've I've seen several models that run into trouble um unnecessarily with performance problems because silly because the time unit was originally off. They corrected it, but it, there were several things built in. Okay, so here we go. Time is is moving on. They're starting in their homes. And and time is passing. When should they move? Anyone? After how long? Anyone remember? 15 hours. Look at that. Did you see the move? Where are they now? Uh, yeah. Okay. Now they're at home. And time is going to go on. That's right. And then they're going to go after their beauty sleep. Um, they're going to go to variously the workplaces or their schools. And then they're going to go briefly to community places, these green ones, right? Like there. And then now they're going back home. Do you see that? Okay. Now, if we slowed it down, we'd actually see them kind of in action. We'd see them traveling. Now, if this were a GIS model, depending on the settings, if we said they should be traveling via roads, we'd see them moving along the roads to get to their destination. Um, and I'll show you a model like this before lunch. Um, uh, but basically all this logic would be this would be essentially the same um, uh, for all this sort of stuff, this get nearest agent, this or or you do get nearest agent by route and this move to all the same. Okay. Okay. So that that's kind of nifty. They're moving. But these two are solitudes right now. Let me post this. Um, let me post this model so that anyone can get it. Uh, there we go. Okay. Um, and here we go. Um, models, asthma, mobility. Okay. Why is it not? Uh, hello. Um, oh, it's still saving it. Oh, look at that. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Um, okay, that's my mobility. Okay, happy. Um, okay. So now, now the plot thickens, ladies and gentlemen. We've got to bring together these two solitudes. We've got to bring together the health condition and their movement. And this is where things get particularly uh, interesting and novel um, with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to lend each uh, place a, a uh, level of air quality and uh level of um yeah level of level of air quality so we're going to have an air quality for each of the community places schools workplaces and homes okay we're going to have a parameter called air quality for them um and it'll be air quality indicator will be between zero and ten okay um and uh, and then separately, we're going to have uh, a level of humidity in the external the external um, environment that will be uh, or, or temperature in the external environment. Okay, um, great. So uh, let's go to home. I'm watching the time here. We're going to go to home, and we're going to add in an air quality indicator to the home. So it'll be called air quality. 
Well, yeah, we'll call it air quality. Um, attempted to make it between zero and one. I think the U.S. has a different system than Canada. Uh, Canada, we tend to do it one to 10 plus, I think. At least that's the one I see common, uh, commonly from Environment Canada. I'm told in the U.S. Uh, that I think it goes like up to 100 or, or something like that. Is is that right? Can anyone from the U.S. comment on this? Um, I'm tempted to do this between zero and one just to avoid ascribing to that um, anyone. So, so we'll we'll set it um, uh, initially. At, um, well, we'll give it an illegal value that we'll spot, and we are going to need this for all the places. So we're going to need it for homes. We're going to need it for workplaces. So I'm going to workplace, and I'm going to put in the air quality there. So all I did is I copied this from home. I did this, and you can right click and choose copy. Um, Wade can tell what that is on Mac. What's right click? Option click, Wade. You, you can control click if, you're, if you haven't enabled right click on your Mac. I see. Or you can do edit copy. Um, go to workplace. I'm going to paste it in. Go to school. I'm going to paste it in. Now, I'm doing this in a brutally objectionable fashion. There's actually a much more elegant way to do this in any logic that uses something called inheritance. Wade mentioned it on Monday. Um, uh, and that would allow all these to be a place. Um, and, and places would have common characteristics. And one might be air quality. Um, maybe, there'd be, maybe there'd be other characteristics uh, as well. So community places, homes, workplaces, schools are all going to have varying air quality. Mm. And, um, and then we're going to have people's asthma be affected by the air quality of the place that they're in, as well as by the, by the temperature of the outside environment while they are traveling um, between places and by the air quality outside. So not only will individual places have air quality, but we're going to have outside air quality as well. So outdoors air quality. Um, Tony missed it this summer, but uh, there was terrible smoke um, here. And uh, so that will be relevant, outdoors air quality. And then there's going to be, um, uh, uh, there's also going to be uh, outdoor temperature. And we'll make some um, assumption that uh, indoor temperature, so I'll have an indoor temperature, we'll assume that's the same for all places, indoor temperature, and we'll assume, uh-oh, uh-oh, I sense uh, I sense another fight between the U.S. and the Canadian contingent. I'm going to declare as a dual citizen, with no pro with no prejudice either way. I'm going to declare we will measure temperature in Celsius. Okay, um, so uh, we we are going to um, make this 20 degrees is the indoor temperature for the U.S. colleagues that will be about 70 degrees, okay? Um, I think it, is it 68 degrees? Um, I could, I should do the calculation in my head, but um, in any case, it's, it's uh, this is a standard uh, room temperature. Can you zoom? Sorry? Can you zoom? Oh, can I zoom? Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, there, there, yeah, so, I have outdoor, probably have to be called outdoor air quality. Um, and uh, that's going to be a parameter. Um, we could give it maybe uh, outdoor air quality. Um, maybe we should give it a default value. Um, it won't be an error. This will be the baseline value for it. Um, maybe I'll make it point uh, point. Uh, no, okay, now this is confusing because uh, in Canada, one is better air quality. Um, 
I don't know why they call it air quality indicator. I would think they should call it air badness air you know, indicator or something. I'll call it 0.8, I mean, very good air quality. Um, outdoor temperature, um, uh, I'm gonna make uh, by default, uh, 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 minus 30. Um, <laughs> with a nod towards our our fair city right um and uh won't be long this says 19 degrees um but yesterday it was saying it was um uh, it was 93 fahrenheit which is bizarre uh indoor temperature is is 20 okay great okay we've got to move quick um, the football players are coming. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so we have workplaces, community places, homes that have air quality. We need to set the assumptions. So if you have an agent who has a parameter, where are the default values for those, or where are the values for those parameters set for each person in turn? They're set at the place that person is created, which is the what? Pop population. Yeah. Okay. Population. I do such other. Okay. Um, so homes. We're going to draw air quality from between zero and one. One will be good, zero will be bad. Um, um and we'll put into place here. In air quality, um, and we'll say uniform uh, between um, zero point ten. Now, this gets really interesting. We could tie this to income in Saskatchewan. There's real problems with air quality, particularly in wood heated homes and um, and homes with gas stoves. But but wood heated homes in the north, I think. There's real air quality issues. Also with crowding and cigarette smoking um, that goes on in the home, there could be poor air quality. So we could get very interesting stuff if we took this model a bit further with, is, are there smokers in the home or you know what's the socioeconomic group and thereby the air quality would be adverse for those from lower income, poor ventilation, um, uh, maybe dependent on, on wood for heating, et cetera. Um, workplaces, uh, maybe we'll have uh, for them uh, something um, uh, somewhat higher air quality, but um, you can get workplaces with poor air quality too, you know, diesel fumes. Could you imagine that? Um, uh, and said, I mean, when we complained about the diesel fumes, the, the, uh, Folks from the site next door came by and we said, what should we do about, what can we do about the diesel home? They said, well, normally we just tell you, if you have bad diesel fumes, you should go home. Um, and, so, and so Jenna said, um, telling us we should all go home is not a very good option. <laughs> okay. Um, so, okay, workplace I did between 0.2 and 1. I, I'm obviously um, just pulling this out of that the hat here. Uh, community places will make it, um, you know, between, uh, so indoor community settings, maybe uh, 0.4 to 0.8. I, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't have better values prepared for these, um, but we do have to move pretty quickly. We could probably find some interesting types of workplaces and communities and put in, you know, appropriate levels of air quality. I want to get some values in here, though, that are representative um, of these things. And, uh, and oh, we need, did I set it for homes? Yes, I did. Okay. And schools, did I set it? No. Schools, it'll be between uniform, between, hopefully, they're a bit better, um, point, point uh, 0.4 and uh 1.0, I, I, I don't know. There's issues with ventilation in schools sometimes. 
Uh, I'm sorry? I said usually it should be good unless it's uh, there's no very useful. Okay, okay. So this will get very interesting, and I I think you know a lot more richness could be put in here by the class of homes and maybe the remoteness of it or the socioeconomic area, et cetera. And um, because we're trying to finish this before the football player stampede in, um, we, we, we're we just going to put some placeholder values. Okay. Um, but this is going to provide the key components between the air quality and the the temperature, indoor and outdoor, we can start to link up these pieces, okay? So we have these two state charts. And here's my thinking. When someone is in a certain place, there will be a certain hazard rate of them developing coughing or wheezing, some chance per hour they develop coughing or wheezing. They enter a bout of coughing or wheezing. That, that hazard rate, that chance per unit time, chance per hour in this case, will depend on the air quality and the temperature of the surrounding space. So uh, if they're at home, it'll depend on the home air quality and the home temperature. If they are uh, at work, school, uh, community place, correspondingly those indoor environments. If they are in transit to work or to school, or to the community place or to home, they will be exposed to the elements and they will be subject to the outdoor air quality and outdoor temperature. And that may trigger their bout of coughing or wheezing with a higher probability. And then they'll recover at a certain rate, um, but then they could develop a bout as well. Um, so, this is admittedly very rough, but it captures this undeniable truth that my risk of coming up with an asthma bout does change materially based on the air quality uh, and temperature around me. Okay, so um, are we okay with that, putting that in place? Okay, we've done this before in another form. And so what I described may sound challenging, but I wanna reflect on the fact that that before we set at varying times what hazard rate would apply. Amongst other things, we had it for risk of heart disease. We had a variable that communicated the risk of developing heart disease. Does anyone remember how that variable was set? It was based on the smoking status. So depending on the state of the other state chart, um, we set the variable that would apply for the hazard rate. So we're gonna do something similar. So we're gonna create a hazard rate, a, a chance per unit time here. It's going to be um, uh, uh, asthma bout hazard. No, it's gonna be called hazard rate of uh, um, hazard rate for asthma asthma bout um uh as asthma bout so for develop for developing asthma bout for no i'll just say for asthma bout. okay but initially it's going to be minus one so we we don't forget to so if, if if we don't initialize if we don't change it will be obvious okay great now when they're at home, what will this be based on? It'll be the home characteristics, right? When it's at work, it'll be the work characteristics, right? Community place, community characteristics, school, work, school characteristics. Great. And when they're outside, it'll be based on outdoor. I see the need for all of those environments in turn to have a nice little formula that given the temperature and given the air quality, it will compute the hazard rate. Are we okay with that? Let's do it. And guess what we're going to put into place for it? We encountered it before. It's called a function. Its job in life will be to calculate the hazard rate. Given temperature and given air quality, its job in life 
its very purpose is to calculate the hazard rate for that air quality and temperature. That's what it'll be doing. It'll say calculate, so it'll be hazard rate for air quality and temperature. And then in the home, we'll give it, so that function needs the information of two pairs of things, the air quality and temperature to do its job. In the home, we'll give it the air quality and temperature for the what? Home. For workplace, we'll give it the air quality and temperature for the workplace. For school, we'll give it the air quality and temperature for the school. Good. Outside, we'll give it the outdoor air quality and outdoor temperature. And all you give it is those two things, and it will do its job and give you the hazard rate. Does that sound okay? Hearing no violent objections, I will proceed with your permission. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, we need a function. Okay, here we go. Function we're going to put in here, a function. And it's going to be called hazard rate for air quality and temperature. You give it air quality, you give it temperature, give it a pair of values, one for air quality, nothing zero to one, one for temperature, and it will it will give you a hazard rate. Is that okay? Is that okay? Okay. Now, this is a hazard rate. This is a, so that's a probability per unit time. It's not a probability, it's probably per unit time. It can actually be greater than one. That will just mean on average you'll develop it in less than an hour. Less than one hour. Uh, if it's five, you'll develop it on average in one fifth of an hour. If it's ten, you will develop it on average in one tenth of an hour. In other words, in six minutes. It's a probability per unit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is our hazard rate. Now, I'm going to express this in a way that might re result from a regression. And so, I'm going to say there's a baseline hazard rate. Baseline. Um, uh, I, I'll call it um, intercept or or uh, um, base uh, hazard, base asthma, um, asthma hazard rate, and and then we're going to have a mm, 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 mm. Um, actually I'm, I think I'm going to do. Um, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. It'd be a bit clearer for you if I said um, asthma hazard rate um, uh, intercept um, term. I'll call it intercept. By the way, this should really say instead of hazard rate for that, it should say asthma hazard rate. Asthma hazard rate. Okay. Okay. And its job is going to return a value. It's going to return a double. Okay. Here we go. Okay, we're almost done. This is great. We're gonna get there before the football players this time. Okay, and then we're going to have asthma, as, asthma hazard uh, rate beta for, for air quality. Air quality, mm, that's a beta, um, like in from a regression. And then I'm going to have an asthma. I'm holding it down, holding down control, and and dragging and letting go. Asthma hazard rate beta for temperature. There we go. Temperature. Okay. For temperature. There we go. So we have this intercept is beta zero. You have to call it beta zero. I said intercept. I'm going to call it beta zero, just so everyone recognizes it. What I'm writing out is this thing. I'm going to give a formula for this as, as this. X meaning e to the beta zero plus beta one times uh, air quality. I'll call it uh, AQ uh, plus beta two. But what am I doing? Um, uh, beta two times air temperature. We'll call it AT. Um, and and so uh, we you know I can I can do this it's x of this thing do you recognize that as kind of from by statistics kind of from a regression term 
Um, these are very common in the literature. When you have uh, risk factors and you have odds ratios, you can take as e to the betas, corresponding betas and so on. Um, come out of uh, uh, reference, various sorts are very common in survival computing risks, um, uh, in um, recurrent events analysis, et cetera. Okay. Now, um, let's reason this thing through. Um, so, uh, the bigger this term here, um, uh, the, uh, the, the bigger this, this risk will be. So, generally, we'd expect this air quality goes up. If it goes towards one, if it's getting better air quality, we're going to have a lower chance. So, we'd expect beta one to be less than zero because as air quality goes up, if you get bigger and bigger air quality, the probability, the hazard rate. So this is the asthma, uh, asthma hazard rate, not hazard ratio, but hazard rate. If, if air quality goes up, so, so if air quality goes up, the asthma, I'll call this AHR, as air quality goes up, um, up, then the asthma uh, hazard rate we'd expect will go down. As air temperature goes up, um, uh, the asthma uh, hazard rate will go down. Oops, sorry, will go down. Um, uh, so it's, if, if, or, or to put it another way, if air temperature goes down, asthma hazard rate will go up. Yep. Um, and uh, so we'd, we'd expect this to be, um, uh, sorry, this to be, this, this would imply that beta one is less than zero. So this goes up. We want uh, beta one to be negative. So as this goes up, this whole thing gets negative. Uh, this would imply that beta two is uh, as air temperature goes up, we'd expect the uh, asthma hazard rate to also go down. That's right. So beta two is less than zero. And beta one should be small enough that you're not getting bouts every minute or what have you given good air quality. So beta zero is going to be um, pretty darn, pretty small as well. Okay. So I'm going to put in here, I'm just doing this off the top of my head, but um, thank you, Wade. Uh, that's awesome, thank you. Okay, so beta zero, I'm gonna make it, so if air air quality, right, 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 right. If air quality is zero, um, so that'd be terrible air quality, and uh, uh, the air temperature is zero, um, that ain't bad air temperature. That ain't bad air temperature for us here. Um, uh, then we we want uh, a beta zero that has let's let's say um, a uh, right. So we want let's say probability uh, per hour. Uh, it's a very bad air quality. So I'm going to say a probability per hour of like um, uh, a point five of developing. This. So I'm going to say natural log of 0.5. So you plug in, if these two go away, because they're zero, zero, and you plug in log of 0.5 here, um, then, then this whole thing of e to the log of 0.5 is, is going to be 0.5. So um, that will be fine. So log of 0.5 for the asthma hazard rate beta zero. And oh, for ln function, oh, there's oh, it's log, isn't it? It's, it's log, and I think it's it's natural by default. It's natural log by default, I think. Let's let's go see this in the documentation. Log, uh, I agree with you, Wade, that it, that it is. Um, log, there's a separate thing, log 10, and regular log, yeah, there's a there's a way to get the documentation here. Come on, um, come on. Um, so there it is. Uh, oh, so why, why is the documentation not showing? Wait, any idea? Log, log, um, huh. So anyway, I don't know why the documentation disappeared. But I'm not getting it either. 
if you go to help, you can look it up here as well. Um, any logic help, you can look up log. Maybe I should show that. Time is short. Football players are coming. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say log. There we go. Uh log. Um, okay, and come on, you're giving other logs. Um log, uh no, 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 no. Okay. Um Okay, uh, library reference guides. Okay, API reference is what I'm saying. This is probably more, more trouble than it's it's worth. Onco, Ethereum, RT Onco. Yeah, log. Okay, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm going to drop this. It's standard Java function, and I could look it up. Okay. Um, Okay. Um, okay. So uh, here for air quality, so as air quality goes up, this markedly goes down. If it goes from zero to one, this drops, uh, it drops by a factor, let's say, okay, so we consider this. If it goes to one, I'd say it will drop by a factor of, of uh, maybe a factor of 10 or something. These again would have to be gotten from a study, but um, probably a, a factor of at least 10 if it goes from zero to one. Um, and so this would be minus ln of 10, that minus natural log of 10. That's, that's correct, that's correct, yes. Um, if it were minus ln of 10, e to the minus ln of 10 is one over e to the ln of 10, which is one over 10. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Okay, yeah, so we'll make it um, minus log of uh, 10. And, and actually, I think it drops by more than that. It probably drops by at least 20, 20 times. So I'm gonna say minus log of 20 for, for air quality, great. And for temperature, now that's a that's a trickier thing. Um, I, I suspect it's much smaller uh, effect. I'm going to say it goes. Um, so if, if it goes up from minus thirty to zero, or, or let's think by ten degrees, um, then it's going to lower it only very modestly. So. I'm going to say minus uh, log of, um, right, um, yes, 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 um, minus log of, uh, uh, of, of, of a factor of two for every 10 degrees. Yes, that's, that's it. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, 10 degrees, 10.0. Yes. Okay, okay, sorry, I was just doing some rough estimates for those. Let's get this, let's get this show on the road. Okay, we're in the presence of greatness, but the football players are coming. So we gotta, we gotta move fast here. Asthma hazard rate, all we do is we code this up. So, oh, we have to set the arguments. It needs two pieces of information to do its job. We didn't do this before with our function. Here it needs two pieces of information to do its job. Guess what two pieces of information it needs to be given? Can anyone say? Air quality and temperature. Yeah, yeah, air quality and temperature. So air quality and it's of type what? Double. It's a, it could be like 3.5, 2.2, 2.71, 3.14159. Two it could be any of those. And so the other one is gonna be temperature in Celsius, in Celsius. It's a good thing to be clear about what the unit is, and there we go. Okay, and all we do is this. We do exp, that's exponential, that's e to the whatever, and then we do the, the, the beta zero plus beta one times air quality plus beta two times air temperature above zero and pole. Okay, here we go. So, asthma, as, asthma hazard rate beta zero, mm. Plus asthma. Oh, I don't know why it says hazard rate. <laughs> I'm, I'm. It's not like the Ozarks or something. Hazard 
hazard rate. Okay, there we go. Boom, done. Okay, um, so we want to do asthma, asthma hazard. There we go. Hazard rate for air quality. That was the next one times air quality. There we go. Great. Plus asthma hazard rate for for temperature times temperature in Celsius. Okay. So we're using these two pieces of information passed to us, the air quality and the temperature. And whatever they're passed to, we're computing this probability, this hazard rate, excuse me, it's a hazard rate for that. So this is what's captured by that, by that function. Given, given these two as inputs, we are returning this value. And that is the final bit. So I encoded this so that, oh, I forgot to complete this. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay, so this should have been log minus log. Um, and the idea is that, okay, the idea of if, if those two, then the probability, if those two are zero, there's a quite high probability. I did minus log of 0.5, I thought. I don't, um, uh, I'm not sure why. Uh, uh, no, it should be log of 0.5, not minus log, but log of 0.5, sorry. This one was set so that if air quality, if air quality um, is one, it drops by a factor of 20. Yes, 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 yes. That's why it's a minus. And this one is set up so that if if we for each 10 degrees in temperature Celsius, you have a lowering of a factor of two for the asthma hazard rate. So as the temperature goes up, you lower it successively by factors of two. Okay, awesome, 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 awesome. A thing of delight. Okay, um, let's just build this, see if it's working. Okay, okay, we're almost done. But the football players are coming. We gotta get out of this joint. We gotta split this joint quick. So, so there we go. Okay, now all we have to do is assign to this variable, um, to a variable that's as a hazard rate for asthma about. So we have to assign to it. Where do we assign to it? I said it earlier, where do we assign to it here? Anyone? Where do we assign? We assign here. We assign to it when they get home. The hazard rate for asthma about will be based on the on the what? On the temperature and air quality for the what? For the home. Okay, sorry. No, it, this should be, what, what's the function called? The function is called uh, asthma hazard rate for air quality and temperature. Uh, so this should be called asthma hazard rate, hazard rate, rate for air quality and temperature. It needs an air quality. You can see it here, an air quality and a temperature to do its job. Let's make that happen. There we go. Boom, hey, get get in there. Okay, so we have to give it an air, what air quality we will give it? If we're at home, we give it the air quality for the what? Begins with H, home, home dot air quality, great. And what temperature will we give it? We give it the temperature that applies at home, which is main dot indoor temperature, indoor temperature, indoor temperature. Okay, there we go. Okay. So let me put that in the chat. There we go. Okay. That's the hazard rate for the asthma bout that we've assigned it to this variable because that variable is going to govern this progression here. Next, we just follow the thought through. In the workplace, what values do we give it for 
the air quality. We give it the air quality of the what? Workplace. Work. Uh, so it's it's actually my workplace dot air quality. And we give it the indoor air temperature, which we're assuming is the same for all indoor spaces. Next, for the school, what do we give it? The, the air quality for the what? School dot air quality. Okay, TAs, please, please try to help here. People could be falling behind. Does anyone want me to pause for a minute while you catch up? The function? Okay. 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 This one. This is the function. That's the value of the function. And it takes these two arguments, air quality and temperature and Celsius. That's the function body. So the function calculates this. Given air quality and temperature in Celsius, it uses those two values given to it, plus these three parameters to calculate this hazard rate. Okay. 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 Okay, does anyone want me to, uh, to dwell here a little bit longer? Okay. Next. Oh, no, you know what? I'm sorry, I did this in transit to school. Don't do it in transit to school. Do it at school. I'm sorry, I'm terribly sorry. Do it at when they get to school. Don't do it for in transit to work. Do it when they get to work. I'm sorry. I, I put those incorrectly at each of these. Do it when they get to work, when they get to the school. Okay. Next, we're going to do it for the community place to which they have gone. Okay. And this one is a little bit more textured because we have to remember what community place they moved to. Okay. So, right, okay, sorry folks, we're gonna need to modify one more thing here where you need a variable that says community place, um, uh, community place being visited. What's the type of this, can anyone say? Community place. Initially, no. When they go to the community, we find the community place being visited. We select it randomly from community places. There we go. And then we move to the, to it. That's great. And so this is for in transit. So what I did is I took the logic out. So if they're in transit, they need to be, they haven't arrived yet. So we shouldn't yet be setting the air quality for the school or, or workplace. We should be doing it here when they're, when they get to the school, when they get to the workplace. So this one in transit to community place, um, we're gonna remember what community place they're visiting. We're gonna move to it. And then when we get there, we are going to use that information about the community place that we are visiting to set the air quality and temperature. So we're going to, and I'm just getting the logic for it. There we go. For in community, what you want to do is set this to be the asthma thing for the air community place being visited air quality and the indoor air temperature. So in community, 
So this is for the in community um, uh, on entry action. So entry entry action. We want this. Okay. Okay. Good. And then finally, we want to set it. Well, we already have it for the home. So, so that's good. And then the final piece, this is good. The final piece, we have to set the outdoor ones. Here we go. Hazard rate for asthma about when they're in transit will be based on the outdoor air quality. So we want this to be outdoor. So main dot outdoor air quality and main dot outdoor temperature. And that's gonna be the same for all in transit, outdoor air temperature. There we go, outdoor temperature. This is going to be for all in transit states. I'm going to put it in the chat. For all in transit states. I'm going to put it here. There we go. Okay. So we're going to take this one bit of logic and we're going to put it anywhere they're in transit, they're exposed to the outside elements. So the hazard rate for the asthma bout applies that uses the outdoor air quality, outdoor temperature. Same thing for this in transit place. Um, and that's right. But you also have to set the community place being visited and then in transit to home, same thing. Um, we, need, we need to set the, the uh, air quality hazard rate. Um, okay, and we, we're putting it before the move to for whatever it matters. I don't know that it does. Uh, wait, does it matter whether it's before the move to or after? No, it shouldn't, it doesn't depend on anything. Yeah, yeah, I don't think so. Okay. If these, yeah. if these code blocks are executed into one of these. Right. Okay, uh, the final bit, and then I'm gonna release you to lunch here is this hazard rate for asthma bout that we've been setting at each of these places, setting it for home to reflect the home conditions, setting it at school for the school conditions, workplace for the workplace conditions, community for the community place you're visiting conditions, setting it to, to the asthma rate for being outside for the in transit states. That hazard rate, which we've been updating in all those different places needs to apply for this triggered bout. So it needs to go here. Has, oh, excuse me. Uh, yes, the hazard rate. That's right. And, and this recovery from bout, I'm gonna say it's at a rate of 1.0 per hour. So it lasts for, uh, well, I'm gonna say it lasts for 0.25 per hour. It lasts for, for no, I'm sorry four per hour, it lasts for one quarter of an hour, one, one over this, so four per hour. Okay, the final thing is I realized this hazard rate, its initial value needs to be something meaningful to give it, to give it something. So I'm going to say it's, uh, uh, it's uh, point, um, uh, point, point zero one uh, per hour. Okay. That's it. Um, that's uh, that's our model. We have people um, who can who can get asthma or recover from asthma. I'm going to post this, and you got to get to lunch. Um, but this model, uh, I will check if it works here. But I'm uh, I think there's a good chance that we have gotten it correct. So I just posted it. It's version four of the model and I will just run it and you should head off here. Okay. Okay. 
Great. Now we're looking at people. And you'll notice you notice that this person is scheduled to develop asthma. They're 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 at school now. They're scheduled to develop it in about 24 hours, but it'll depend on where they are. Okay. It looks like um uh, they're back at home, and uh, they've been exposed to these successive environments. Uh, they're starting their commute, uh, or sorry, they're, okay, so, yep, um, this person has, it looks like they've been spared a coughing or wheezing. So, basically, they're at a certain probability of developing coughing, wheezing based on what place they're at right now, and uh, there may be times that they end up um, experiencing coughing and wheeze up. Oh, they coughed and wheeze there. Um, okay, okay. Let's. Uh, you get off to lunch. I I posted this, and we'll discuss the implications a little bit after lunch, and then we'll see this trucker help talk uh, by uh, Eric and a colleague at uh, Texas A and M. Thank you very much. Hey. Sir. Sure. Uh, beta zero is uh, your thing that that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, um, let, let me look into this over lunch. I didn't realize that the point you yeah. out. Uh, Wade, do we know anything about where Nastaran is today? No, I haven't heard okay. anything. Let me let me check over lunch. Sure. Thank you for bringing to my attention this. Yeah. Understand that? Yes. Yeah. So I have meal tickets, so make sure you grab one before you uh, go to lunch. Sorry, what, what is this? Then you want to uh, change the nobody to the computer in mathematics? Sorry, I can't read what that is. Is that an X? Yeah. Okay, you have to write it write it clearly because I can't read what that is. That's, yeah. Mm -hmm. So so sorry, so so a to the x equals you want to change Okay, so sorry, I'm, I'm so is it so how is this connected here? What is this? I wonder where that can be. For example, log. Oh, log base. Okay, yeah. we call it base. Yes, sure, 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 sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two equal three. Sure. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. So this is the type of thing we regress that comes from a regression, and uh, you're trying to understand like. These formulas. So let me make sure I can address any needs here. Hold on. No, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, are there any? Jalen says recording is not installed. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So.